this is your Weather Extreme video for Wednesday, July the 5th. Certainly hope you had a great 4th of July. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. Our satellite image this morning features a few clouds over about the northern half of the state of Alabama. And we actually have uh, a frontal boundary that is kind of sagging into the area. The, not a very strong front by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but uh, that will, I think, over the next couple of days, especially Thursday and Friday, uh, make showers a little bit more numerous. In the upper atmosphere, uh, we're still uh, stuck in this pattern, and this is a relatively good pattern for the eastern part of the country, uh, not for the western part of the country, but we have the uh, very strong ridge over the western part of the country and a trough over the eastern half of the country, uh, that helping to keep the heat in the western states and uh, keeping the uh, eastern half of the country fairly cool. Now, it's all pretty warm because it's July, but there's a look at current temperatures across the United States uh, at uh, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. or so um, central time. We still have 90s for readings in the southwestern U.S. That's hot. On our uh, regional radar, we have three little showers in um, Tuscaloosa County. Otherwise, the radar is free in Alabama, but we do have, once again, one of those large clusters over in uh, uh, southeastern Oklahoma and parts of uh, southwestern Arkansas. Watch warning map, still not too busy. Uh, we do have a number of uh, flash flood um, warnings in effect in the Red River Valley on the Oklahoma side. And then over the western states, you see uh, the, the brighter pink, reddish colors are heat advisor, are, pardon me, are uh, fire danger. And then over Arizona and extreme uh, southeastern California there, it's uh, uh, heat advisories. And speaking of heat, I ran across this graphic out of uh, Arizona, and uh, there's a look at some of the temperatures. That's pretty hot. I know it's dry heat, but still, that's pretty hot. The QPF uh, is uh, indicative of showers for the next five days, and uh, some spots could receive this amount of rain on the order of, uh, you know, uh, three quarters to one and a quarter inches of rain. Now, not everybody will get that because of the nature of the showers, so just keep that in mind. Storm Prediction Center has a marginal risk along this frontal boundary uh, that encompasses a little bit of the Tennessee River Valley for day one. Day two, uh, we still see a little marginal risk over uh, the area from that uh, frontal boundary, but we uh, now focus on an enhanced risk that is uh, over parts of uh, Wisconsin, uh, surrounded by a slight risk that encompasses uh, eastern Minnesota, parts of Iowa, northern Illinois, and uh, upper peninsula of Michigan. And for day three, uh, that area becomes a marginal as uh, the front uh, uh, kind of weakens a little bit. And looking out into the tropics uh, in the Atlantic, we do have this area of disturbed weather uh, that is about 800 miles to the southwest of uh, the Cabo Verde Islands. And the projections are that it will continue on a west-northwesterly course. It does have an opportunity. It's got a window right now for possible intensification. But after a couple of days, it will be entering an area with um, conditions are less conducive for any kind of development. Meanwhile, in the eastern North Pacific, we have three areas, and fortunately for the United States and Mexico, they're all staying away from the coast, and that's certainly good. All right, the 06C GFS model run this morning, and uh, we can see this kind of broad frontal boundary uh, across the Mid-South area. And uh, one of the clues to where we may see showers or thunderstorms, I think, comes from precipitable water values, and you see that over the kind of the southeastern, a little more than the quadrant, southeastern quadrant of Alabama, we have lower precipitable water values on the order of 1 to 1.2, 1.4 inches. So I think uh, showers will be less uh, likely there and a little more likely over the northern uh, the Tennessee River Valley and parts of the west central Alabama. The trough uh, remains fairly sharp, and we see it uh, basically strong enough that it should push that frontal boundary a little further to the south on Thursday. And I think that's going to lead to uh, increased precipital water values over the northern half of the state of Alabama. And that should lead to more numerous showers and thunderstorms for us uh, in the, the forecast for tomorrow. That uh, little trough moves on but kind of elongates out to the southwest. Uh, so the result is that the front moves into 
north and central Alabama, exactly where, depends on which model you pick, but according to the GFS, sort of into um, around the I-20 corridor, and that will uh, help again, I think, on Friday to create more numerous showers. On uh, Saturday, we see the uh, nice troughiness, and that uh, stays that way, but the front is not going anywhere. Uh, it's kind of losing the push, the, the uh, trough not getting any stronger, and precipitable water values stay way up there. So the bottom line is I think showers fairly numerous on Saturday. The trough uh, is still there Sunday and beginning to show a little bit of signs of weakening. Monday we see the trough weakening as the ridge to the west pushes in just a little bit. And I think that once again just keeps the front in our area. So that keeps the focus and I think we stay with uh, at least scattered showers and again, precipitable water values are up there. So uh, as I note in the uh, discussion, it's probably a good idea to uh, keep in mind the possibility of isolated flash flooding because these storms could have some uh, pretty uh, good amounts of precipitable water to deal with. Tuesday, the ridge noses in just a little bit into the Mississippi River Valley and uh, it, it noses in or continues to nose in on Wednesday, maybe e even pushing back a little bit. And that's uh, going to keep us basically in the showers. So kind of a monotonous forecast, I know. The thing about the uh, voodoo country is, uh, as we look out here to the 14th of July, the GFS is now very bullish on keeping a nice trough over the eastern part of the country for week two. That is different than we saw yesterday. Uh, this is the 14th of July with a nice trough there. By the 17th of July, we still have a good trough over the eastern part of the country. And at the end of the period, around the 20th of July, we have a nice trough. Again, that's nice for the eastern half of the country because that keeps us out of excessive heat. Not good for the western part of the country as they stay under that huge ridge. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. Uh, we're on a one-a-day schedule while James is on vacation, so I'll have the next one posted first thing on Thursday morning. Have a great day, and Godspeed.